I'm just back from a special screening at my local Cineworld of the 1988 absolute classic Die Hard. There's not many movies that are a nailed on 10 out of 10, but Die Hard is one of them. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? Yippee guy! You hang in there. I'm guessing the vast majority of people watching this will have already seen Die Hard, so I'm not going to do a huge story recap. In a nutshell, Die Hard tells the story of John McClane, played by Bruce Willis. He's a New York cop who is visiting LA at Christmas time. It's Christmas Eve. He's visiting LA because that's where his wife and children are. They are separated, have been for six or so months. He stops by his wife's office to meet her there. And before they can properly get into the chat of, you know, are we going to get divorced or not? Wouldn't you know it, things get interrupted because a group of international terrorists led by Alan Rickman take over the building and, you know, um, the movie starts. The script and the dialogue for Die Hard is pitch perfect. The few one-liners that there are land well. And of course, Die Hard blessed the world with the immortal line, yippee mother the argument that John and Holly have at the start, the chat amongst the terrorists, it all just feels like real chat. It feels like real dialogue. It feels like real people talking. It doesn't feel like the script dialogue, which is, which is you know, great. The characters are believable, not just the leads, but like the supporting cast. Like, you know, Ellis is the douchebag 80s uh, cokehead guy, the news reporter guy, Sergeant Powell. You know, there's no weak links there when it comes to the, the script and the characters. Um... Acting-wise as well, everyone is on their A-game. Alan Rickman gets praised a lot for this movie, and rightly so. He's phenomenal in it. And I think this was his, possibly his first or one of his first movies. I'm sure I read that once. Like, he'd done a whole bunch of theatre before and maybe some TV work, but this was his first movie, as far as I know, and, you know, what a debut to make. However, Bruce Willis doesn't really get that much praise for his performance in Die Hard, but his performance is amazing. It's such a fine line to walk to play the, the, the regular the regular Joe, you know, the everyday cop who is going through some marital problems, um, to walk that fine line of being that, but also being, you know, the cop who has the skills to potentially, you know, take out a, a building full of terrorists. I just feel like he doesn't really get as much of the credit for, for the acting in this movie, and, you know, he deserves a lot of the credit because his performance in Die Hard... Is, is brilliant. There's a bit of a monologue he has probably halfway through the movie where he's in the bathroom. I think he's just picked the glass out of his feet and he's on the radio to Sergeant Powell and he's talking about, you know, get a message to my wife. You know, I think the line is, she's heard me say I love you a thousand times, but she's never heard me say I'm sorry. His monologue there is, you know, is a brilliant monologue. Brilliant, it's brilliantly written and it's brilliantly performed. Bruce Willis' performance in Die Hard is simply brilliant. Speaking of brilliant, if you're enjoying this, a wee sub to the channel would be brilliant. Thank you very much. When I checked on IMDb for the uh, the runtime for this, I was quite surprised. It clocks in at two hours and 12 minutes. If I was to guess before I was looked at it on IMDb, I would have pegged it at, you know, maybe an hour 40, an hour 45, because because it just sips along at like a at like a breakneck pace. There's no there's no dull moments, there's no boring scenes, there's no lagging sections, there's nothing where you're like, oh yeah, I would have cut that scene because it just drags on. Everything, every scene feels like it should be there and it feels like it is part of the story. It doesn't feel like it drags the story down. It doesn't feel like, it, you know, it drags the pace down. The pace of the movie from start to finish is perfect. The cinematography, the visual style of this movie, the way John McTiernan moves the camera around, you know, he puts the camera, puts the camera in the action. You're in there with the cops as they try and, like, breach the building at the start. You're there with Bruce Willis as he's crawling through the, uh, the 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 air ducts. He talks about it. I think it's either on it's either yes yeah, on the Predator uh, commentary track. He talks about you know putting the camera in the action instead of just putting the camera at the side of the action. Watching it, he always likes to put the camera in the action. Random tangent here. If you're interested in filmmaking and director's commentaries, the director's commentary that John McTiernan does for Predator is brilliant. It's like a masterclass in old school filmmaking. I'm not sure which copy they showed at Cineworld tonight. I don't think it was a 4K copy. I think it might have been a HD copy because the uh, there was a couple of shots that looked quite soft compared to the, the 4K disc that I've got at home. But other than that, it looks great for a movie that's 35 years old. Remember, this is, this is 1988. It's pre-CGI. 
all of the effects are done in camera, you know, with miniatures and rear projection, front projection, things like that. And there's not one shot that stands out as being, oh, that looks a bit dated and that looks a bit like, you know, 80s or 90s. It holds up to a modern eye very, very well. There's no denying the cultural impact that Die Hard has had, you know, in the world. Uh, at the time of recording this, it came out 35 years ago. And as a timeless classic, it's, uh, you know, Die Hard on a insert location here has become like a, like a trope in movie pitches. Die Hard on a bus, speed. Die Hard on a plane, passenger 57. Die Hard on a boat, under siege. Die Hard on a train, under siege 2. You know, the list goes on and on. I don't know if Die Hard was the original. I'm sure, like, you know, some film historians will say, well, you know, Die Hard was kind of copied from this and that. But, you know, Die Hard has the been the one that's lasted. Die Hard is the one that's, you know, the benchmark for this, this genre of movie. Um, even more recently, like, you know, a few years ago, maybe a decade ago, you know, movies like The Raid, which is a brilliant movie. The Raid is, you know, is, owes a lot to Die Hard. I'm not going to get into the whole, is it a Christmas movie, is it not a Christmas movie? Uh, suffice to say that Die Hard has been a part of my movie life for, you know, most of my life. I remember the, the VHS copy being in our house as a kid. I, I even remember the trailers that were on the VHS copy. There was a trailer for um, Die Hard 2, Die Harder. Uh, I remember watching that. I remember the trailer voiceover guy talking about, you know, they say lightning never strikes twice. They were wrong. Like, even the trailers for the first Die Hard movie, VHS, are stuck in my brain. Uh, I then got the DVD set when that came out, you know, the, the, the chunky DVD set that was the Region 1 set that was Die Hard 1, 2 and 3. I then got the Blu-rays when they came out. And more recently, I got the 4K disc for the first Die Hard movie. I don't think the rest of them have been released in 4K. But, um, but yeah, the 4K disc for the first Die Hard movie is well worth the upgrade. It's a, it, it's a pretty good transfer. Die Hard is an annual watch in my house. Uh, yes, at Christmas time. It's in the Christmas movie rotation. Um, so in that respect, that makes it a Christmas movie for me. There's not been a single year, there's not been a single viewing where I haven't enjoyed the hell out of Die Hard. Every year watching Die Hard is enjoyable. As I said at the very start of this, it is a nailed on 10 out of 10 classic. The fact that John McTiernan made Predator and then Die Hard, like, all in the space of a couple of years, like, back-to-back. -back. I think Predator was 1987, Die Hard was 1988. That's a gift to humanity. That's the end of this uh, retro movie review. It might be the only retro movie review that I do. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Um, has anyone not seen Die Hard? In fact, that's probably a better question to ask. Let me know in the comments. Has anyone not seen Die Hard? That would be interesting. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. If you like this video, you can subscribe for more content like this. Make sure you smash that like button and I will catch you in the next video.